Welcome back to the Valley City Bar Series. In the previous videos, we built the bar tops and the table tops, and in this video, we'll cover the build process of the booths. As you can see here, we had to build 12 booth halves. The two end booths were single sides, while the other 10 were butted up against each other. Let's go ahead and get started. We first started by building up and cutting to size the walnut boards to make the booth end caps. This was somewhat of a simple process, but the many steps and procedures we were going to use with the CNC machine meant we needed to pay extra attention to what we were doing. We used biscuits for all these panels and just to make sure I didn't put a biscuit where the CNC was going to cut out the shape, we used a few story sticks to mark out where each biscuit was going to go. With so many operations to these booths, it was imperative that Matt and I developed a plan for each step. It naturally worked out as we progressed and each of us knew what the other person was going to do and what needed to be done. This made the process pretty much streamlined and the results very consistent. With the end cap panels glued up and ready to go, we passed them over the joiner, table saw, and the MFT table to make sure the bottom corner was square and the unit was going to fit in our drum sander. We used the drum sander to get an even thickness. Next we can head over to the ShopBot PRS Alpha CNC machine and we place a sacrificial piece of MDF on our spoil board and use the CNC to cut out a jig to locate the end caps. We have four positions on the jig, but for some reason we lost most of the footage in this step and only captured our test run with the first two end caps. Basically, this jig allows us to locate the end caps and then using our CAD file, we can cut out the end cap geometry and also use it to cut out the rabbits for the plywood panels. The CAD cam took a bit of time, but taking a step back and looking at how much time the CNC saved us on this step alone was absolutely worth it. I bet it would have taken us four to five times as long to do it manually, plus the results would not have been consistent. Each part came out the same and the results were fantastic. Next we could start working on the plywood panels that are going to connect the end caps and actually make them a booth. We are using a poplar veneer with a plywood core for this material to ensure these booths are made with my reputation in mind. We use a combination of our Makita track saw and our saw stop table saw to make these cuts. Thank goodness all the bevel cuts were going to be on the ripping side of the material so we could easily accomplish those at the table saw. Each and every time we did the same repetitive task, Matt and I got faster and faster at it and we knew exactly what each other was going to do. Where the back of the patron's knee was going to be, I wanted that hardwood where the two panels were going to connect to just so the durability and longevity over time was going to hold up to a bar and restaurant theme. We used a combination of Type-On 3 wood glue, pocket holes, and clamps for the joinery. And with the combination of the included rabbit on the end caps, the joints were very strong and were going to last a very long time. With all the parts cut and ready to go, we can begin assembly. We apply glue to the rabbits and place the panels in place. We drive the pocket screws and continue to assemble each joint. We again developed a really good assembly process after the first couple booths. We applied clamps where needed but ultimately had a really good assembly experience that I was dreading from the moment we started the booths. With the stubby back and the backrest put on, we put the seat in place with the walnut edge banding, we marked the exact width it needed to be and brought it back to the table saw to cut it to size. Then assembly could continue. With the bench assembled, we needed to add some supports for the bench. We went back to the ShopBot CNC and had it cut out all the supports we needed out of a single sheet of plywood. This again saved us an incredible amount of time and after all the supports were cut, I put pocket holes in the 90 degree corner and we applied glue and secured them in place with pocket screws. This really gave the seat a solid feel and tied everything together. Next I apply a round over to the end caps and began the incredible amount of sanding needed to be done. After sanding was completed, I put water in my HVLP gun and sprayed all the booths to raise the grain as we are using a water based product. After the booths dried, I sanded away the roughness and sprayed on a stain and then 7 to 8 coats of finish. I didn't get the installation on camera, but the results were very nice. The client was extremely happy and I was proud of the work that left my shop. This entire Valley City Bar project was a huge undertaking for my small shop, but was an incredible accomplishment. 
Thanks for following along and please feel free to leave questions or comments down below. I would love to provide some feedback. Follow me on social media via the links in the description so you can follow along on these crazy builds. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and smash that like button. Thanks for watching.